computer. Okay, so today we are talking about creating your ideal practice, like your ideal day in practice. And we're going to spend about 30 minutes playing in my Zoom room. I always like to make sure that when I do these recordings, I remind you that you want to make sure that you've got pen to paper ready to go and you take notes. You are always welcome to screen share my stuff. Um, and we're going to go over a lot. Marge, if you can just announce in the event of the Facebook group that we are live in the main group. Okay, so I'm going to do some screen sharing today. I'm going to do all kinds of stuff. Marge is also dropping the PDF that we're going to play with today um, in the actual event for the group if you're watching us live. If you're watching the recording of this, then all you need to do is go into... Um, the actual lesson where you're finding this recording and you'll see the PDF that I want you guys to have your eyes on. So here's the thing. First of all, if you don't know me, my name is Dr. Jody Dinnerman. I'm a pediatric and prenatal chiropractor here in New Jersey. I've been in practice for 22 years of which 18 of those years, I spent 80% of my time trying to figure out how to do the manager chiropractor into it, mom, try to have balance in all of it. And I couldn't do it. I just sucked at it. So what I did do though, and what I was really good at was creating solutions. And when push came to shove and it was finally time for me to figure out how to really enjoy my experience and practice, because why else are we here? We're, we're in practice to create joy and to trigger joy in people's lives. And whichever vehicle we reach that joy through, it doesn't matter. That's why we're in practice, whether it's helping them instigate greater health or helping them realize their connection to their self or whatever it is on some level, we're in practice to instigate joy. So best that we enjoy our process, right? Because I think a lot of people think that it's one or the other. We're either giving great care or enjoying ourselves in practice. And really at the end of the day, if we're not enjoying it, then what's it all for? So we're going to talk about all of the different components of having and creating your ideal day in practice. So I'm going to just repeat that there is a guide. And if you're watching this live, the guide is in the, um, in the Facebook event. If you're watching a recording of this, the guide can be found wherever you found the recording. Okay. So I'm going to set up my PDF here, and I'm going to screen share with you. And I'm going to go back and forth. I'm going to share some of my very favorite tools in my practice. Um, I'm also going to share with you some of my secrets and tips that I've created over the years. I do want to, I want to say right now, I want it to be understood across the board that I am a pediatric and prenatal chiropractor. That's important because some of my tools are relevant to pediatric and prenatal chiropractors. If you are a sports medicine therapist, or if your avatar or ideal client is a blue collar construction worker, much different jam. However, you can take the concepts and apply them to your practice. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm going to go over with you the components of realizing joy in your day in the office, what we need to think of, how we can take um, the moving pieces and put them inside the box instead of outside of the box. I'm going to push you to start thinking about what's no longer serving you or what's not working. Sometimes Asking the question, what is no longer working for me or what is no longer serving me is the hardest thing to do. Because once we ask the question, you know that the answers are going to fly forward. Um, Marge, I'm just going to ask you to handle all of the comments coming in, anything at all that you see in the in the Facebook, uh, the live stream. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you my screen. Let me just, I wanna continue the recap. We're also gonna go over what needs to be created in order for you to realize your ideal day in practice. What do you need to create for your practice? What do you need to create for your day-to-day -day experience? All of the things are the things that I want you to start thinking about. And then at the end of this training, we're going to look at the different things that you do throughout the day. So, um, 
in my office what we do just to let you know if my students are watching this in the facebook group you're welcome to join us in the zoom room then you have like front row accessing you can ask me questions and stuff any of my students or clients are more than welcome to do that um and then we're going to go over breaking up your day into bite-sized pieces like in the mornings this is what you do best and this is what you're going to do in the morning in the office so that at the end of the day literally you're creating your ideal day and practice Practice. Okay, let's dive in. So I'm going to go ahead. Hopefully I don't screw this up. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. You should be able to see a PDF. If you are not able to see a PDF, if somebody can just drop me a text, I think you're good. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at ideal day in practice. What does it look like for your body? I know that this might sound weird to some of you guys, but we're going to get into it. Your body, your mind, your spirit, and as my mom would say, your pocketbook or <laughs> your finances. So let's start with body. And you guys, if you haven't downloaded this PDF yet, again, it's in the event of the Facebook group, um, then don't worry about it. Just write on a piece of paper. Make sure you're writing as we're going through because we're going to take time to write. So the first thing, ideal day in practice, as far as your body is concerned, here's the example. This morning I was running out of the house. I've got two teenage boys. I've, I decided to bring the puppy to the office today. You guys saw the picture. Um, I'm doing all of these things and there's so much in my world happening and spinning. And when I get to the office, what I think to myself is, oh my goodness, this is my happy place. It will not be my happy place very quickly if I forget to bring food because you do not want me to have low blood sugar or be grumpy because I don't have enough food. So part of me taking care of my body during the day, during my ideal day in practice, is prepping food for myself. So go ahead and think for a minute. The way that you answer the question is, think about your last day in practice, whether it's today or yesterday or two days ago or a year ago, and think about your physical experience. What did you need more of, less of, different anything. Were your pants too tight? Did your shoes not fit you right? Did you bring the wrong socks? Did your socks have a hole in them? Did you not have food with you? Did you not take time to create water for yourself? You know, I walk around with this big jug of water because I'm, I'm walking my talk and I'm talking my walk, right? So my practice members see me drinking this big jug of water. And when I push them to do a hundred days of a gallon or more water a day, they see that I'm with them. They see that I'm walking my walk. So as far as your body is concerned, when you're in practice, what do you need to implement? What do you need to change? Go ahead and jot that down. The next piece, one of the other things that I implement for my body is I have, I'm gonna just stop share for a second. I have like a, um, a section of my desk. I've shared a picture of this with you guys before where I have all of my things and my things for my body, right? This is my practice. I need my peppermint oil. I need my colloidal silver in case somebody's coughing on me or whatever. I need my breathe again to remind me to take deep breaths and I need my vitamin D. Okay, so this I keep all of this sitting right here at my desk. So if I get overwhelmed because Sally's in my office and her kids running around with a poopy diaper, I can take a little dot of peppermint oil. I can put it on my upper lip and I don't smell that diaper. So you got to figure out <laughs> taking a dab. You got to figure out what are the things that you need to do to prepare as far as your physical experience is concerned when you're in practice. Okay, so I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. And if you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and drop them in the comments. And then Marge, if you don't mind texting me if questions come through. So your mind, what do you need for your mind? Do you need breaks? Do you need a certain kind of music playing? I'm giving you permission to think outside the box and not like you need it, but if you need it, Think outside the box and create what you need for your mind. For my mind, I needed to shut off for a half hour every day. I need to take a nap in the middle of the day. I need to, to write. I need paper. I need travel cards. I need my date book. I, that's what my mind needs to not be overwhelmed, right? What does your mind need? I need my pens. I need color. I need... Um, I need to feel connected to this is getting into spirit, which is the next piece. 
I need to feel connected to the people who make me feel okay in the world. These are all of the things that I need to do in order to feel like I've got all of my eggs in the right carton in order to go to the work with a full, a full package. <laughs> okay. So the next piece is going to be spirit. What I find with spirit is that it's usually a consequence of what I did the day before. So if I'm taking care of myself to prepare for a great day in practice the next day, the day before I need to make sure that whatever it is that I do that keeps me right sized and feeling good about my experience on the planet, I do. I prepare for my day in practice the day before. I make sure I get my workout in. I make sure if I, I find meditation is my jam that I'm getting a meditation in. Whatever it is that I need to do, if you're a very religious person and you need to see some kind of a symbol of your religion to remind you, to anchor you, and for all of my Staffless Practice Academy students, this is where we get into anchors and rituals. So what do you need to stay spiritually connected during your ideal day in practice? And just go ahead and jot it down. Okay, the hardest one is probably finances for a lot of people. Finances, protecting yourself around money, which is just energy exchange, can be really tricky if you don't take the time to prepare. One of the things that I see people really burn out over is what they're giving out compared to what's coming back to them. Even people who are seeing 500 visits a week, if you're, if you're not in fair exchange for your time, energy, and money, you're not going to be living your ideal life in practice. Okay. I hope that everybody's in agreement with that. So I just hearing these words, don't make me wrong for it. I want you to hear what I'm saying. And I want you to jot down the possibilities of where things need to change. Do you need to raise your fee? Do you need to be clearer about your systems? Do you need to have your money stuff written down? This morning I had a, um, a session with one of my private clients and we were talking about um, how 20% of his practice doesn't want to look at a screen. They don't want to text. They don't want to go to a website. They want pieces of paper. They want copies. So the solution that we had to create for him for his policies around money is we just make photocopies of what his fee system is. That's all. It's that simple. It's figuring out what's the challenge or what's keeping me, what's blocking me from creating my ideal in my day and in, in my experience and practice and creating a solution for it. So when it comes to money, where are the obstacles? And go ahead and jot them down. Okay, so we've got body, mind, spirit, and money. Okay, then you have this really beautiful list of what needs to be changed. This is just, you're taking the information that you found on this sheet and you're going to what's not working. What are the things that you need to change? I don't want you to overanalyze this. I just want you to create a list of the things that are not working that you need to create action steps for. And I'm going to give you about two minutes to go ahead and fill out the sheet as I take a drink of my very big water bottle. What needs to change? What's not working? It's hard to do this stuff. This is the stuff, but if you do it now, you're going to see that little things happen in your practice where you start enjoying your experience more. So you're going from this sheet to this sheet and making a list of what's not working, what needs to change. Okay, I'm going to keep going. When you have time, when we're done going through this training, I want you to go into what is working. I need more of what? So for me, it would be, I need more time the day before my hours to meal prep. I need to take a break and make a plan with a friend to go for a walk or with a potential alliance lead, which we call pals. I need to, um, Jody, I'll be with your question in just a hot minute. I need to make sure that um, my people are prepared for before they come in in the morning. That's going to look like me taking 10 minutes and looking over the schedule before the day starts. These are the things that I need more of to make sure that 
at the end of the day, I say, man, that was fun because that's the goal, right? Okay, so Jody had a question about travel cards for online records on live stream. Jody, we're not going to get into it now because we're really going to stay focused on creating your ideal day in practice. Okay, what needs to be created? So when we look at creating new systems for your family, for your physical space, on paper, going to Jody's question, like, what do you need on paper as opposed to what do you need to do in your EHR and in computer land? That also includes compliantly speaking, what needs to be compliant, compliantly checked? What do you need to make sure of that your systems are in place? So for family, your physical space, paper, and time. What needs to be changed? What needs to be implemented when we think about time? And you guys, I'm gonna stop share for a second. All of this is in light of running a practice without staff or with staff who only comes to the office to do what they're great at doing. This is so that efficiency and joy is front and center. If you prepare by answering these, if I prepare, I'm gonna speak for myself, by answering these questions, I'm good, right? If I don't prepare, I feel it. And I go home and my husband asked me how my day was. And I said, man, oh man, did I earn my money today? Because I worked hard. Most days I leave here and I think that was just so much fun. Okay, I'm going back to sharing. So um, I wanted to give a couple of ideas as far as let's just go back to what needs to be created. You're also going to answer questions around food. Are there things that you need to create when it comes to food, when it comes to rest, when it comes to balance, and when it comes to exchange? Yes, you're seeing repeats here because some people are going to hear the word exchange and have a really great reaction to it. And some people are going to see the word money and have a different reaction to it. So I'm putting it all in front of you to pull all of the answers out of your beautiful brains so that you can truly create your perfect day in practice. Okay, so before we get into day planner, I want to go, I'm going to do a little show and tell. This is fun. Let me just check in and see if there are any questions. I like paper too, Jody, and um, I'm studying a lot about notes and compliance and all that stuff. And um, let's just say that if you're one of my people, that's all in the mix. It's coming to you. So just hang tight, okay? Um, okay, we're gonna go into, these are the fun things. These are the things that I get excited about in my office. When I was a little kid, my mom used to tell me that I could find a rock outside and I could name the rock and color on the rock and make the rock my best friend and have so much fun with a simple rock. That has not changed. I find things and I just get so excited about them. So I, that's my personality. Some people might love simplicity. They might come to the office and create a space for themselves and their practice members that just allows them to breathe a little bit better, right? That um, has the right nutrition for the athletes who come to see them because chances are, if you're taking care of athletes, you're an athlete, right? So it ha we have the right nutrition, we have the right drinks, we have the right stretching area. All of the things are already set so that you're really enjoying your experience in the office. So I'm gonna go over some of my favorite things I thought that that would be fun. Um, I, please remember, I'm a very visual person. I'm very tactilely stimul stimulated. I move through the world smelling things like this is just who I am, right? So, and I had to learn that this is who I am after 22 years in practice. So please understand that time takes time. A lot of these things took a lot of time for me to go deep with and really protect myself with because at the end of the day, even listening to this training, essentially what you're doing is you're protecting yourself to create a joy-filled experience in practice. Okay, so here are a few of my favorite things. So one thing is that I use beautiful things to educate my practice members. If you guys have seen me do this before. So we talk a lot in chiropractic about subluxation and the body not moving optimally. And when we give an adjustment, it allows the body to be restored at maximum potential. And when 
when the adjustment happens, there's a lot of movement and chaos in the system. And then the movement and chaos settles as you go out and you live your life. And that allows your true music to play. So when I first found myself, um, we're going to listen to that music for a minute. When I first met, found myself talking about music and the visual of things going into a state of chaos, I asked myself, what what has all of those things in common? And the first thing I thought about was a snow globe. So this is one of the education tools I use with my practice members. And when they see this, it sparks joy for me and it sparks joy for them too. It's a great education tool. Okay, that's that. The next thing I want to show you is I'm so, I geek out over essential oils. I love them. I've been using essential oils for 30 years. And um, I go on, uh, I go online and I buy a bunch of these bracelets and literally they're like uh, maybe a dollar 50 each. And they're really beautiful. This is a tiger eye one. And I take the, let's say that a mom comes in and she needs a reminder to take deep breaths throughout the day. She's getting really overwhelmed. She's got a lot of anxiety and I want her to find peace in her experience, right? So I'll go to my little rock collection, right? Like I was when I was a kid, I had sticker collections, I had rock collections, and I love nothing more than to share that stuff with the people that I love. So I go over there and I take one of the bracelets and I take an oil and I rub the oil on the bracelet and I put her put it on her wrist. And I say to her, every time you notice that this bracelet is on the wrist, I want you to take a deep breath. And then I take a bottle of the oil. I'll literally give her a bottle. I, I really don't, I don't pinch pennies when it comes to this stuff, because I figure if this woman is going to be investing wellness care with me for really the rest of her life and the rest of her kids' lives, I can give her a $15 bottle of oil, right? Of course, you have to be super compliant with what you're allowed to do in your area. So I'll take an oil and actually I won't give her an, a whole bottle. I'll make a little, this is not so fun, you guys. I'll make a little, I'll put fractionated coconut oil in here, a few drops of oil. I put it in a really pretty little bag and I, I send her home with this and this. And this says to her, I care about you. I want your experience in my office to be second to none. But guess who gets even more joy out of doing this? This totally floats my boat, you guys. If your boat is floated by um, turning people onto power bars or protein shakes or uh, different kinds of inserts to put in their shoes after a long day out in the field or whatever it is, if you love sharing those things, then make a way for you to share those things. Okay. I'm not telling you to sell stuff. You got to do what works for you. So the other thing I want to talk about is my activator. So this is a chiropractic tool. If you're not a chiropractor, the reason that I do this is because I learned early on, I think even before I went to chiropractic school, that my hands are my tools and I got to take really good care of them. And 20, 30, 40 years into structural adjusting, your hands are going to get tired, right? So I'll use my activator a lot. I've gotten to know this instrument really, really well. And my point in sharing this with you is have tools that are going to create protection for your experience in the office, depending on what your craft is. We've got PTs, OTs, psychiatrists, whatever it is. So if for the psychiatrists who are in the group who are listening to this, if you have a lot of people coming in with really heavy emotional stuff, it's really important for you to love your day in practice, for you to have 10, 15 minutes between clients to get a drink of water, to go for a walk, to do five minutes on the yoga mat, whatever it is that blank slates it for you, it's putting the protection pieces in place so that you truly can enjoy your day. Okay, another um, protection piece is we talk a lot about love notes. I was talking to one of my clients about these this morning. This is a way for me to stay out of overwhelm when I'm in the office, because remember, I don't have staff here. So if I'm in the middle of grooving in my office and I got all of these things with all these people and all these babies and all these diapers and all these hungers and all of the stuff, right? And this thing is ringing and my texting is going off and my boys are needing me and all of this is happening. And somebody says, Jody, I need a super bell. 
I could just about lose my cool, right? So this is the system I have in place. It's called a love note. It's already written out so that people can give me the admin pieces that they need. They fill it out. There's a basket and a pen over here and they put it face down on my desk. There's a system in place to protect me so that my day is joyful. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. The only other thing I wanted to show you, no, there are two more things. Um, I wrote a whole book about enjoying your practice. <laughs> so you have no excuses. The book is literally on Amazon. Okay. It's called the joy filled practice plan. So, um, get it while it's hot. It's good stuff. And then I'm also going to show you that I mentioned earlier that I'm a pen to paper kind of girl. And one of my favorite things to do is to just flip between planners. So, on a Saturday afternoon, honestly, you guys probably like once a quarter, I do this. I walk through the aisles of my local office supply store and I pick my very favorite brand of not brand, my very favorite um, flow when it comes to pen to paper, whether I feel like going to a day-to-day -day book or whatever it is, it just reconnects me. And it's just one of these things that I enjoy. It's a weird thing. So the bottom line is what do you enjoy? If you don't have enough of those things in your office, it's time to start implementing. And I wanted to give you visuals on how I do that. Okay, Macy is asking about what essential oil company I use that again, I'm gonna diverge. And it's definitely a question that you can ask me in private because I definitely don't wanna come off as salesy at all during this training. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I'm gonna keep going, you guys, cool. So. I'm also going to say if any of this inspires you, speaking of salesy without feeling salesy and sharing this with you, if any of this inspires you to jump on a 10 minute phone call with me, if we're not already playing together, Marge, can you go ahead and drop our texting number in the chat? And if you want to just text me the words, text me the word chat, C H A T. And um, text the text the word chat to where Marge is. She's going to give you the number. Okay. So this is the day planner. When we went over here, we talked about what needs to be created, and now we're going to talk about how to break up your day. And for my clients who were working on time management stuff, this one's for you. Okay. You know who you are. So. I want you to list out the things that you do in a typical day. And um, in Staffless Practice Academy, we do a lot of time map stuff, like stuff on organizing your time structures throughout the day. So, and again, this is all in light of running a practice without staff or with staff who only does what they're really great at doing. So in my office, it's going to look something like we do scheduling. I serve great chiropractic. I take notes. I do money stuff a little bit. I take care of my office. We do a little bit of recalls, maybe once a month. I connect with my Practice Alliance leads, which turn into Practice Alliance loves. If you don't know what that means, please hit me up. I do a little bit with stats, not much. And I do a little bit with, I really don't do much marketing these days for my practice. So go ahead and list out all of the things that you do. You might want to take the serve part and break it up into the different visit types that you have. That's really important here. So the serve type, the serve part, what I want you to do is what is service? So in my office, it's re-evaluations, it's initial consultations, it's special needs visits, like if it's a mom trying to figure out how to latch or a kid who moves differently through the world or whatever it is. It's group adjusting and it's solo adjusting. Okay, so you figure out all of the things that you do regularly during your work day. Okay, that's part one. Part two of your day planner, and these are your, this is your day in practice. Part two is I want you to take, now that you have a list of the things that you have to do, what do you want to do? You guys, not what your practice members want to do, not what your partner wants you to do. What do you want to do in the morning? And what do you want to do in the afternoon and evening? And from there, you're going to create your practice schedule. It might look a little chaotic when you start doing it, 
It might look like, how am I going to shape shift my practice schedule? And if you know me, I'm going to tell you, you do it in bite-sized pieces. So for me, this might look like um, from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. every morning, that's my creative time. That's when the phone's not on, nobody's pulling at me, and I am writing. We're actually almost done with our third book, and the fourth book is about 50% done. So that's when I'm working on the creative stuff, because that's when my brain and my heart are quiet. Da -da 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 from eight until about nine, I'm really good with preparing my day, whether it's for the kids, for me, for the practice, whatever it is. I'm in prep mode. I'm in do mode. When I get to the office, if it's an office day, from 10 to about 12, I'm fresh. I'm like ready to rock and roll, right? I'm ready to really concentrate. I'm ready to really dive deep. I'm ready to really connect. I'm ready to take notes. I'm ready to weed through files. That's the best time for me to see new patients. Does that make sense to you? From four until about six or three until about six, I wanna lighten up a little bit. I wanna dance more. I wanna stop thinking so much and I wanna do a little bit more. It's just my way, okay? That's the best time for me to be serving chiropractic care. So you have to, and then of course, six o'clock, I leave the office and I go to the gym and I lift heavy things and I put them back down. That's another thing you, as far as your body is concerned, when we are in here, we want to think, oh, we're back a few pages. We want to think body. What do you need to do to protect your body? I need to go to the gym after I see patients. If I don't do that, I start to hurt. Okay. So you got to figure out what works for you. So that's the schedule, AM, PM. And then what I want you to do on the final page is create a service plan for yourself. If you're a Jane app user, you can actually create shifts for each type of visit and say, well, I do my best work in the morning one-on-one. -on -one, so I'm going to put my initial consultations in the mornings, and then I'm going to do my group office hours in the afternoons. However you want to work it, your thinking ideal day in practice. That's the point of all of this for you to, here's what I want for you. I want you to leave the office 10 minutes after your last person leaves. And I want you to shut the lights out and I want you to lock the door. And I want you to say, that was so much fun. I can't wait to do it again. It's totally a possibility. Okay. I'm going to stop share. I'm going to look for any more questions. Uh, Lula Light has dropped our texting number in the comments. So if you want to twirl with me for 10 minutes and you are not already a client of Staffless Practice Academy, hit me up. I'm going to go ahead and stop record and I'm going to field any questions that might be out there.